So this article really from uh, Mike Galsworthy. Um, I agree. Uh, we need to analyse what went right, what went wrong, and we need to build upon what especially went right and change, make tactics. Because here's the thing. Should we leave on the 31st, which is more than likely going to happen, um, there will now be a very, very pro-rejoin movement. And here's the thing. Last yesterday, we covered the article of about how much Brexit is going to cost by the end of the year. An estimated two hundred billion pounds. Not only that, our growth has slowed and has diverted from the rest of the G seven countries. They're now pulling ahead, and we're just stagnating. One of the other things that I think is still worth mentioning: had the Christmas. Uh, the like the annual Christmas uh, bump to the economy of people buying not happened, the Bank of England would have reported that the UK has entered a recession. That's what happened. That's what they said because of the slow growth, because there had been literally no growth in the third quarter, uh, well, for the past two quarters. They literally said, if it happens in the fourth quarter, we are going to have to announce that there is a recession has happened to the UK economy. No one reported on that. But that did actually happen. And it is terrifying. And that only got saved. The only reason Brexit has got saved <coughs> was because of the annual Christmas bump. And that was it. And here's the thing. Our economy hasn't improved it is gonna get even worse when we leave so the predictions for a recession a brexit recession are completely on track <sighs> but anyway um we'll get into what mike galsworthy uh, has to say <coughs> so the People's Vote cam campaign and broader array of the Remain slash Final Save movements had a, as a string of successes since 2016, but ultimately fell at the last hurdle. For me, in summary, the People's Vote campaign itself had the greatest achievements in the parliamentary battle, but was woeful on the digital. Reach into key demographics and critically, it left... Uh, it left starving communities on the ground that were needed for success in other in another referendum or general election. We pushed politics right into the right place, but it did not cover their backs by adequately building the structures to support them on the ground. Which is, is true in a way. Yeah, I agree with that. However, it must be said that no campaign can win in isolation, especially in a general election where people are asked to put, uh, vote for parties. Ultimately, the SNP, Liberal Democrats and Labour all agreed to an election, leaving three, years, uh, leaving three years of our work in their hands and leaving us to rely on their ability or not to work with each other. So what now? To answer that, we first need to look at what went wrong in terms of Labour and the Lib Dem parties and then the People's Vote campaign. So both parties were ill-prepared for an election, which is completely true. Um, it shouldn't have been called. Um, Labour should have just continued on and just gone, no, we're not going to have one. We're going to force you to sort it out. And if you can't sort it out, then we're just going to have another referendum because that seems to be the only logical way to sort it out. And, say, and it should not have taken the bait in the first place. As many of us were, uh, were in... Uh, oh, were in at pains to say it at the time. The Boris, Boris Johnson was trapped in the cage of a rare parliament that was uh, prepared to scrutinise his, his withdrawal bill. He was uncomfortable under the microscope and desperate to break out, of the, uh, break out and tour the country and make grandiose promises. You can forgive the SNP, but the Lib Dems and Labour dropped a clangour by picking up the gauntlet of a Brexit general election. When Johnson uh, <coughs> needed far less than 50% of the vote to validate his vision of Brexit, the opposition parties com uh, compounded their error by failing to work together on a strategy 
for the remaining majority of the votes. Which is true. The Lib Dems completely refused to work with Labour. And that is true. And that rests on the head of Joe Swinson. Joe Swinson should have put everything else aside and just say, I'm going to work with Labour. You look at the general election results, all the results where Labour lost, if you look at the increase of votes to the Lib Dems, they all show that Labour lost those seats because people switched to the Lib Dems because they thought that there was this electoral alliance happening. And it didn't, wasn't ever in place. And I warned people before the general election, that's what would happen. The Lib Dems were overzealous when pragmatism was wanted. <coughs> At the European elections last May, they got their big break. Like the Brexit party, they surged, with a new leader coming in uh, a few months later, raising support and MPs joining from other parties. The Lib Dem had a remarkable, uh, a remarkable latitude to redefine themselves. For me, here's where they went wrong. Um, as soon as Joe Swinson came in, she should have uh, put a pair of wellies on and toured farms in the rural south of Wales to talk about defending British farmers from a reckless Brexit. She should have talked about community values, communication, uh, community protection, community investment, traditional British countryside and shared European standards. In short, go after rural Tory Remainers by adopting a responsible position. As for Brexit policy itself, there was no need to spook the moderates with a revoke stance. Just pledge to put Johnson's deal when it came to a public vote. Labour, by contrast, needed to hold on to both uh, the Wokington man and some, but not all, of the youth and inner city remain base. The party knew this, but the result was to sit on a fence until they grew, in, uh, grew into and simply ran out of time uh, and credibility. Ironically, Labour tried to um, appeal heavily to the youth, with their only offering to Workington men uh, be, uh, being not to be, be overly passionate about Remain. There was no offer uh, for the aspirational older blue-collar worker. Uh, protest politics, free uni, uh, free uni and free broadband was a dish that left them uninspired, and Jeremy Corbyn was not able to dispel the tabloid boogeyman image and present himself as a credible, energetic leader of the nation. With Brexit and the pr uh, proposition to... <coughs> <coughs> With Brexit, the proposition to voters remained wishy-washy, which I agree with. Um, they only managed to get it together really at the last second, and by then it was too late. But that's exactly what Ed Miliband did. So once again, Labour didn't learn their lessons on that. Um, and elusive and diluted to the end. Precisely, no one cared about a Labour Brexit. It's a message that should simply have been. We put Johnson's deal to a public vote. Simple and clinical. Everything else would have then been clear, but their biggest sin was a lack of preparation for their policy in its own leave-leaving seats. If you know, uh, you if you know, you'll uh, you'll have to come off the fence. But since you, um, but yeah, sure, sure as hell, you'll need to ensure that that you prepare the ground to be on your side that you're prepared to land on. The preparation simply wasn't done in those uh, in those red wall communities that were lost. Partly because of the MPs. Um, and I'm sorry, but the MPs do bear a lot of the blame in that regard. Um, they simply hadn't been communi communicating effectively. Um, I've said it before, um, Dan Jarvis should be doing a weekly Facebook Live every Friday before he finishes his, his you know, before he goes into his weekend, whatever. What he has done this week in Parliament how it benefits the local community. I still believe that is what Dan Jarvis should be doing. Um, if not, he needs to do, start doing that now. Um, and this preparation simply wasn't done in those Red Wall communities that were lost. Uh, such work takes many months, even after the European elections, this, uh, that scared the Labour leadership enough to shift it originally to the people's vote side. This disintegrated, um, this disagreement remained. 
it was their responsibility and ours jointly, and we both failed. I'm good that he both. I'm good. I'm glad that he says that that it was their joint because that is completely true. There were a lot of people in the um, the remain campaigns that were ignoring this fact that you have to build the groundwork on this, and they never did. Um, and there were groups that did. Um, so I'm not, you know, saying they all failed on that. Some did succeed very well, but they failed to get out there enough. Like I say, it takes months, and getting out in like the just as the election is announced, it's it's not enough time. So now it moves on to the Remain movement and the People's Vote campaign. So six months before the 2016 referendum, I wrote an article for the Guardian entitled "The EU Vote Isn't Just About Westminster. We Need Grassroots Campaigns Too." It was a critique of the Britain's Stronger In campaign from being a top-down monolithic organisation that wasn't adequately invested in and supporting the rich array of pro-EU campaigns that were emerging. The local and, uh, and sector community voices that were needed, yet celebrities were picked as the spokesperson with zero persuasion uh, it didn't cut through. The digital was, uh, was, was, was stoff, aloof and unengaging and it didn't interact with the community. Everything was about the singular, centralised meshes from the top. I hated it, but despite the warning, there was no great change of direction and in June 2016 the campaign lost. However, after that defeat, the pro-EU campaigns boomed, regionalised and found, and found their own voices. Through the second half of 2016 and 17, there were divisions of opinion over whether the campaign for a compromised soft Brexit or to resist Brexit outright. This was followed by by a congealing of grassroots pro-EU campaigns, many events, march marches, and community development, but largely under the radar with little media attention. The formation of the People's Vote campaign, uh, which to which I was uh, contributed, two founding campaigns, the Scientists for the EU and the NHS for the People's Vote, was, uh, uh, was to achieve several objectives. One, build a critical campaigning mass, and two, to unite under a message that the campaigns could agree on, and three, to find, <coughs> to find a message that cast a net wider than remain. Four, to take a, a new tack that would gain media relevance and cut through. Various pro-EU activists were wary of the message at first. However, the rationale was clear and it worked to seize a new public narrative. It achieved the media cut through. My own reservations were different. Specifically, they were in the form of an early stage. Open Britain, the successor, successor to Stronger In, sought to control the email database, finances and brand. The style of the campaign felt to me like a rapid relapse of the earlier 2016 campaign, which, many of the, which had many of the structural flaws returning. Towards the end of the 2018, many local groups began feeling frustrated, fully aware that the new flourish of the people's vote, finances and emails gathered by all were being hoarded uh, by People's Vote HQ rather than being used to strengthen these local groups. However, circumstances in 2018 dictated that the cohesion trumped these concerns about the balance of power within the campaign. The main objective was, with Theresa May's very... Uh, uh, feeble minority, feeble majority, sorry, was to convince more MPs from the Labour and the Conservative parties to hold Brexit to full parliamentary account and move towards the option of a public vote on any end deal. We achieved significant cross-party victory when the party ran, uh, wrangled in uh, to ensure the extension of the departure date, date from March uh, 29th, uh, 2019 to the 31st of October. However, I believe the People's Vote campaign did not adjust to shifting to the shifting sands. Little noticed uh, by many was the effect of the European elections on the Remain uh, minus Leave gap. The gap that had been drifting open since the summer of 2017. But at the vote last May, it sharpened narrowly. Nigel Farage's Brexit party was a su superb lesson in political entrepreneurship, sweeping up the media narrative and returning many to the pro-leave fold that had become, uh, that become disenchanted with May's uninspiring Brexit. Which again, I, I agree with that. They didn't sweep up the media narrative. They didn't challenge it in any way, shape or form. By contrast, the PV campaign uh, campaign's ongoing mantra for We Demand a People's Vote 
was sounding tired. It had already been uh, lodged as an option, but it wasn't shifting the dials anymore. The 6 million plus signature revoke petition, the then surge of the Lib Dems, had set a pro-EU hair running, but it wasn't being backed up by any new funding, structure, or, res or res a robust uh, argumentation. The grassroots were bored of repeating the same PV mantra. They wanted to argue for Remain and cut through the material to start shifting options on the Remain Leaves access, which would also give new inspirational pull for a second referendum. This particular was particularly important in the Northern Labour Leave areas to undermine the elite reputation of Remainers. More importantly, we needed the Labour MPs from those areas to be reassured that voters had shifted in order to win their backing. However, local groups felt unsupported in their efforts to build on the ground and throughout 2019 I managed to raise and spend some 200,000 on building up the Facebook pages of local pro-EU groups uh, from 100,000 uh, 100, combined followers to 600,000. Now, very intriguing in some... Uh, now including in some very leave areas yet in addition we needed big investment in local real world infrastructure a plus message to development and testing specifically for the labor leave and tory remain demographics this was in my in my opinion the time to spit out our pro our, our outrider pro remain campaign and fund local groups separate from the co uh, com uh, complementary to the core uh, pv core campaign to champion new regional grassroots voices and messages. We needed a new vision to pull the overturn window across, leaving the core PV campaign firmly in the political middle ground and winning over Tory MPs on the, on the, on the mechanics of the democracy argument. It was as if uh, it was uh, successfully doing. Unfortunately, this message and structural tension got very much caught in the rising, uh, rising internal distrust over who controlled the People's Vote organization and the broader movement. The internal debate spiraled out and broke into op and broke out into the open, where it became an ill-disciplined mess. Uh, but we have done enough at that stage to get a people's vote. My concern was that by October 19, uh, if we had won enough in Parliament to one force an extension and two reject a Brexit deal at a stage of our choosing, we uh, but we had not done enough on the ground to convince enough MPs that we could actually win a second referendum. Nevertheless, a people's vote was teetering on the cusp in October, and more time uh, dissecting Johnson's deal on the operating table could have, renealed, could have revealed enough flaws that parliamentarians from across the board would have been seen as its uh, would have seen its contents to be very um, beatable in a public vote. Accepting a rushed general election to resolve the public ex acceptability of the deal was simply a gift to Johnson but it was a move by Lib Dems and Labour that we could not control. So what now? This year will be intense. The Conservatives have not stopped campaigning. As Labour and the Lib Dems lick their wounds, the government has been quick to try and secure their gains and plug their weaknesses. The election hit the Tories uh, uh, hard on their reputation with the NHS, uh, according to a poll I, I was running, Incidentally, I poured all my general election campaigning funds into NHS me uh, messaging in the northern marginals, yet this was where Johnson immediately sought to patch up his damage with the NHS promises in the Queen's speech. The government also swiftly moved on to regional inequality, the minimum wage and financial support to farming, while also using that to mask the aggressive changes to the Brexit deal. They will remain in, in, in the incessant campaign mode throughout 2020. As to the timetable, we come out uh, of the EU formally at the end of this month with just 10 months to secure a deal. There will be a Labour leadership election in March, probably, which will be a huge, uh, which will be hugely defining in the terms of the tone of the opposition. That will be followed by the local elections in May. Then June is the last opportunity for the UK to extend the implementation period. That is likely won't happen. But the local elections could impact that. The second half of the year will be loaded with threats of the crash out without a deal, promises and threats of a US trade deal that will play large and fi uh, finally. In parallel, the politics of Northern Ireland and Scotland will become increasingly oppositional to Westminster. If you want to know whether the Conservative Party will pull a uh, put strategic focus, you need to look at the think tank onward. These are the people that brought the Workington Man strategy and the onslaught to the re Labour's red wall. Matt Hancock and James Cleverley spoke uh, at their election debrief, uh, debrief event. 
The buzzword for them now is community. Their focus is on local community identity. They have identified that most voters now care much more um, now care more much more about less about individual freedoms and long for more community cohesion identity and pride this is what i've been championing for a year and it is also where we are strong and that where they are weak especially with the disruption threats of brexit to many uh, vulnerable local areas our best narrative at this stage is that we wish to project protect our communities from john from, from johnson's reckless thatcherism 2.0 which is absolutely on point yes 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 if you um take this message forward johnson is just pushing factorism 2.0 this will resound in local communities the people who voted conservatives remember thatcher they still hate thatcher if you show johnson that he is just thatcher 2.0 they will lose faith they will turn against him So through our local groups, we have a national structure and this is far more advanced on the ground and in social media than anything on the opposing side. What we need, uh, what we need now are those well-developed local groups to become experts in their, in their constitution and the constituency, political and community structures, food banks, charity initiatives, local events, local businesses, local press, map it all out, integrate, drive local conversations. We can map it nationally and tra transfer best practice between groups. Again, this is particularly important in the northeast, in the northern seats, as the tone coming from them will do a lot to shape the Tories' game plan on Brexit. That determines our national overarching stance of whether Britain will align more closely with the EU or the US. We've got a race uh, we've got a race on to build a, a redoubtable local group force and pressure it, uh, uh, pressure in that region for May. Let's not mess it up. Alongside uh, hyper-local community opposition to, John to Johnson's recklessness, we also need to be ensuring an effective political opposition. If you have not joined Labour, the Lib Dems, Greens or SNP, Plaid or Northern Irish pro-EU parties, then make sure you do. We must also ensure that we battle for proportional representation and better cross-party working yes i agree um we should also never allow ourselves to be in a voting uh, majority uh, we should also never uh, again allow ourselves to be in the voting majority but parliamentary minority finally of course we want to battle to rejoin the eu as full members but that battle can only be won after we've built the deep societal and digital structures that have been a force to drive such an effort let us ensure that our future we look back and think uh, and thank ourselves for the work we invested in in this movement now to build such a national community this is the future of politics history is long and it has, uh, and and let our learn and let lessons be learned and we we'll should get ahead of the game yes 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 i fully fully agree with that i talk a lot um about local community in barnsley um i've already thought about this about approaching um my local eu group um to say look we have not lost the argument all we need to do is fight back against like um the people in this area really 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 um hammer them with the damage and the recklessness of what johnson is doing remind them that he's basically just being thatcher 2.0 uh, Thatcher is hated and if you can turn Boris Johnson into Thatcher just wearing a different mask people will abandon him they'll go well I'm not people would never ever vote for Thatcher just as if they would never vote for Johnson if you can get that messaging right and that is one thing that we need to crack especially in the north because people have not forgotten Thatcher and if you remind them of what Thatcher did and what Boris Johnson plans to do he will fall very far and very fast.